All right, hey you guys, uh, welcome to today's video where we are just here to share God's heart and what he is sharing with us and um, yeah, see I told you this is what happens, like I get stuck, like <laughs> I know what's in my heart, like what, what God's speaking to me and what he wants me to share, but then for some reason right now, I just get stuck. It, I shut down on the entire last video I was in with you. Yeah. It was a complete shutdown and it was a complete meltdown. And um, the only way for me to get past that meltdown is to tell you guys that if you're watching this, you watch the last one and you'll know that it was about faith. And, and the whole time my brain was just running a million miles an hour, but it was focusing on that I have no faith, the lack of faith thereof, like it's non-existent. And, and what keeps rolling on in my brain is our um, need to hold on to repetition mm -hmm. and to, to, to stray away from change. There's only one thing that's constant in this world and that is change, you know, except for us. We keep doing the same thing over and over again because in my head with my no faith, we wake up, we eat, we, we work out, we go to work, we whatever. And then we get sick. Sometimes we die. We sleep, we wake up, we eat. Got Ecclesiastes. That's what we keep doing. And the only time I've ever changed um, was from force. Yeah. I've, 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 no. And, and that's just it. That's what I'm saying. No matter what you do, it is or it isn't every day. Because God is not out there doing what you want to do. He's not chasing culture. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I'm, I'm stuck. I don't have no faith because. Okay, so that helped me. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> the Spirit helped me get to where I needed to start because you get it. You get what it's like to be where you have no faith. Like, we're not saying we're no longer not believers. I'm a believer. I'm, I'm a human being that lives on this shitty yes. world. Yes, we are flesh. And that's what the Lord brought me to. So like, even after sharing the last video of how, you know, my cold sore and how at one time I had more faith to now little, almost no faith, some people didn't get that, which they probably just read my post and didn't actually watch the video. But the Lord, he led me to um, 1 Kings chapter 8 to Elijah, who also was a man who was a mighty prophet for the Lord. He was the prophet who um, prayed for it not to rain, and it didn't rain for three years. Like, that's experiencing power. That's a miracle to be able to pray and it not rain. And then after the three years to call out the prophets of Jezebel and Ahab on Mount Carmel. I mean, he went boldly up on that mountain and called out the 400 and false prophets, called out um, King Ahab and challenged them to see who is God and where their hearts are. And I highlighted this verse where, um, you know, so they're up on, on the mountain and now the false prophets have done everything. They've got their altar built. They have their calf. They're dancing around. They're cutting themselves and nothing happened. Their false God did not bring down fire. Okay. But then, go ahead. Can, can you yeah, stop yeah. for a minute? So, okay. So with everybody's need to compete with the Joneses, we also live our faith by what we see in the church and what's going on. So we get caught up in that rigmarole. That is our mission, not mine. I'm, I'm, I'm including myself with you because I'm just as screwed up as everybody else. But everyone is so screwed up that they think if they go to church, if they do this and they do that, and if they follow in line to do what they see out of their eyes, then God's going to move. That's not how God moves. That's why I have no faith right now because God moves no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. You can't go and follow in line with someone else to get a, a relationship with God, to achieve that, 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 that sanctitude, if you will, with, right. with the Lord, right? right. That, that I'm lacking thereof right now with my no faith because I'm being a stubborn human being. Mm -hmm. 
but, we but all are. and yeah, but I'll get over that, you know, but it's all about opening her eyes. And like she's reading, they were doing all, they were cutting themselves and doing all kinds of stuff and dancing. waiting for God to move. <laughs> dancing, we're just doing. believing. Well, the thing was, they didn't realize their focus had went towards Baal, a false God. It was no longer directed to God. And we are fools if we think that we don't put our hearts towards false things. Because well, what we I do. just say, we are looking at answers from someone. Someone, something. If you're following someone, you're looking at answers from them. Yeah. Mentors, so whatever, it doesn't matter. It's still a person, still a human. And the only place to get answers. And how often do we look towards the church to get our fire, to get what we need instead of. We did until we walked away yes. from it. Yes. And now we've been forced to find ways to really get fire. Yes. And I've failed since then. But this is us trying not to fail by sharing our life because the only way that we can make it is to have communion. And yes. what I mean by communion is relationship and communication with humans. Not worshiping one another, but enlightening one another, one another on whatever the truth holds. Yes, and God is seriously in this season trying to get where his believers are turning their hearts back to him. To him. And that's what this verse right here, can you see if I can see it? Where? This yellow. I can't, my <laughs> eyes are really bad. I'm trying. Elijah approached the altar and said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that at your word I have done all these things. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that this people will know that you, the Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Yeah, so... Good. Yeah. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying, like... I love, that was Elijah's simple prayer right there to God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like, he is really wanting us to examine our hearts in this season and really see where our hearts lie. And I, this is to me, like, this is all to me. He wants me to even, you know, that I've been telling you, he wants me to examine my heart. He wants me to even turn my heart and my faith back to him. Not that I'm not still a believer. That's where God, that's why God led me to Elijah because here's Elijah. Me and Jeremy both know what it's like, even in our marriage and our relationship to both be standing strong together in our faith. And we also know what it's like to be in the very next chapter after God. So here's Elijah. His prayer is answered. Not only did he have his altar, not only did he have his bull, he had them pour water three times until water was pouring off the altar. And then he called down fire. And just like that, his altar was put to flames because his heart was seeking God. And then that miracle, hearts were turned back to God. So then Elijah, he goes and tells all of the Israelites that were there that saw that. And he proved that all those other ones were false prophets and said, slay them, slay all those false prophets. And they did. So there was a great um, turning back in that moment. That was a great moment for Elijah. And we all have those on the mountaintop experiences. But the truth of the matter is when we are truly reading the word of God and we see the prophets, they had more experiences in the caves than they did on the mountaintops. Because we see Elijah here, people following him, doing his command. And then we see that he is calling it to rain again after three years and a great famine. And then it starts to rain. But then Ahab gets back and tells Jezebel what happened. And it took one threat. Jezebel, you, Jezebel said, you killed all my prophets. Now I'm going to kill you. And just like that, in that chapter, it said that Elijah was afraid. Elijah was afraid and he began to run. He went to the desert. <laughs> What's crazy though, I don't get, this is what I don't get, Jeremy. Jezebel threatens to kill him. He's afraid. So he runs to the desert and he sits there under the tree and says, Lord, I just want to die. <laughs> But are we not the same? Like, we're scared of this, but then we're like, I just want to die. And it is normal. That, like, I want you to know that it's okay. Like, it's okay. Because I feel at times I'm being condemned because of how I feel or what I'm going through. We weren't meant to be on the mountaintop all the time. And we're about to see that in another circumstance. Thank you for that. Like, okay. 
life experiences like the only reason we can sit here and do this, you know, is um, because of her knowledge and experience of the Bible and her life's and shortcomings and, and mine is the same way. But what she keeps talking about is, uh, I guess that was a quick notion that if you don't know the Bible, then you need to get to know the Bible in order to be led anywhere in the Bible. So, but she's talking about the mountaintops and when we're on the mountaintops, we become complacent because we uh, think that we're doing it ourselves for some reason because it just comes so naturally now, like you struggle and then you're just not struggling anymore. You come complacent and then you falter on everything like you did. It's, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a problem that we have. It's, I, I, I live in that complacency sometimes and I live in that ego that I'm not ever gonna do without work or this or that, you know, but that's from being on the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, 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 he puts us there and then he drops us back into the cave. Yes. to see how we handle it and and nine times out of ten we don't handle it the right way we let the, the enemy creep in and and control us and it's in the cave that he wants to prove where his true believers are and he knows his true right believers right. aren't the ones that are just up shouting on the mountaintops and doing all of these great things the true believers are the ones that find themselves in the desert in the wilderness in the caves and I love what um, we see in that next chapter because God didn't leave um, Elijah there to die. God's going to fulfill his purpose with Elijah. And so God sends an angel to touch him and to feed him several times for ha before having him go 40 days on a journey to get to this cave. And it was in that cave when God spoke to Elijah and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And that's where, you know, Elijah, as we all do, go on with our woe is me, right? With our story of what's happening. This is what happened. Whoa. But thank God that God has those moments that allow us to get to the cave. Because it's in the cave where humility happens. It's in the cave where our pride is broken. It's in our cave where the relationship with our Lord is strengthened. And that's what we're going to see here. The Lord wants to say, look, I'm not... That's not where our relationship is strengthened on the mountaintop. Yeah, you get to experience me there, but my our relation is strengthened in the small, still voice. He tells Elijah to go out and stand at the edge of the cave because I'm going to pass by. And so Elijah sees this big wind and the Lord says, I'm not in the wind. And then he sees this mighty earthquake and the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then he sees this mighty fire and the Lord wasn't in the fire. It says that he heard a voice and it was in a soft whisper that he experienced the Lord. And that's when the Lord said again, Elijah, what are you doing here? Because anytime we find ourselves in the cave, it is with that no faith thinking God's not here. I can tell you this past year, I struggled with even God, are you real? Because I'm not feeling it right now. But we are flesh. We have feelings. And we want to feel it. And we want to feel it. We want to <laughs> believe it, you know? Yeah. And so I, I sat in that season a lot in my own cave this year. But it is to recognize that God isn't in all these big scenes that we think that he's in today. You might see a lot of movements going on. But we need to really question, is that God or is that false prophets like Baal dancing around? bringing chaos, bringing confusion, bringing deception. Because like I told my, we were talking with my friend today, if these believers are really believers and really know the word, they're not going to be flaunting their homosexuality. They're not going to be slandering. They're not going to be gossiping. There's not going to be so much hatred that we see today that is flowing from people who call themselves believers. But when I really look at this chapter and I and I look at the end at what happens when um, Elijah thinks he's the last one. Because sometimes I think I'm the last one. I'm like, is there anyone else, Lord? Or are we the only ones that are hearing what you're having to say? Well, here's the truth. The Lord said, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of people up on the mountaintop thinking that they're experiencing me. Then it's just an earthquake. It's a high. It's just a, a yeah. fire. No, it's just a high. Like Yeah, it's just a mighty wind. It's not even me. They don't even hear my small voice because after that, after all of that, God told Elijah to go and 
I'm going to butcher these names. Anoint Hazel over Aram and Juhu over Israel. And Elijah would be the prophet that took Elijah's place. And he was basically going to have um, the king of Aram destroy Israel. And the king of Juhu, whoever didn't get destroyed by Aram, was going to get destroyed by Juhu. And whoever didn't get destroyed by Juhu was going to get destroyed by the prophet, the new prophet, Elijah, where there would only be 7,000 Israelites left. Only 7,000. And we know they were a nation. So when I look at that, that's why I wrote in the book. I See, I already forgot what I wrote down. God always leaves a remnant. And that's what we have to understand. There's just a remnant of God's people. There's only a few that are truly wanting to seek him and be set apart and not bow to Baal, to culture. Baal is culture. Yeah? No, I yeah. mean, that's how it I is, look at no, it. No, it is culture. It's culture. It's what, it's what, it's, the, <laughs> our world is a, is a product of what we have wanted for at least the last 300 years. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's just it. You know, technology just came upon us and it's already going to. Yeah. I'm not going to go into all that that stuff, but well, you um, know, it's 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 we just see it. Culture says that homosexuality is okay. You see it all through TV, so now believers yeah. are just going in with that. Uh, yeah. So it, that's just bottom line. You reap what you sow. The word yes. says that you reap what you sow. So whatever your mission is, that's going to be your your your. Uh, what am I trying to say? Your purpose. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, the outcome is going to be based upon that mission, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, have you ever um, based an outcome upon the mission that you're on? I mean, when I lost faith, I turned my mission um, into the business that, that, that I run, that we run. Mm -hmm. I turned my mission into it and gotten to where we do pretty well. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But But then I'm like, you know, I, I struggle because, yeah, I have this mind that, that just wants to say, F this and F that, I'm, I'm just done. Like, I go out there in this world and, and I, I get stuck in bitterness. There's very few times that, that I'm relaxed, like I'm relaxed right now. You know, like one of the main reasons I don't want to be on this camera is because I'm connected to you and hopefully not you, but the people that, that, that follow their own mouth, their own stomach, you know, they follow their every need. They drive cars and they go out there and, and it just shows the lack of aptitude or the lack of, I, I don't want to say the wrong things and offend anybody, but let's just say the lack of conscious, consciousness, right? So that's what I'm learning to use to overcome my bitterness so that I can sit here and relax or that I can get to my, in my car and go out there and, and, and mingle as much as I have to with the outside world without flipping a, 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 a switch in my brain that turns it completely off mm -hmm. because I, you have to understand me. It's 14, 15, 16 years old. I turned my mission to I don't care. I want to have fun. Let's play, party, crash, fight, destroy, do drugs, go to prison, get locked up. So I never reached any kind of consciousness except for what was right in front of me and what my mission was. I had blinders on and I rolled through everybody. I rolled through my mom, my dad, my brother, my friends, my sister, my, my first wife, my kids. I just, I just rolled through everybody and just created the massive wake of destruction. And then when I got locked up and then got locked up and then got locked up and then all of a sudden I'm looking at seven years in TDC and, and I know I did several years in county off and on from the time I was 16, 17. Yeah, I, I, I started at 17 with, with, with junk because of my driving and it didn't end until 2019. I went through all that prison and all that stuff. And then at the tail end of screwing my parole up twice, going through two um, ISFs, the second ISF, my last 
four weeks there, I started taking a, uh, a cognitive intervention class with a woman named Dondi Dehaven, and it was like I was supposed to be there. That was the first time in history, in my life ever, period, that I felt like I was sitting somewhere that I belonged. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it was the first time in my life that I ever sat in a room with 20 other grown men and a teacher and had all of their attention, the utmost respect, feedback from everybody. And, and I sat there with those four, four weeks with these 20 men and we went through our entire life, our belief systems and what was good and what was bad. And, and uh, this woman just like, God set her there to, to show people that like me. Okay. So my mind goes a billion miles an hour. It's what it does. And it's, it's done it my entire life. And I shut it with drugs and trauma and everything else. And she somehow converted all of that attention into something that turned out to be extremely productive. And I have been the second I got out of that ISF. I have soared. If we want to look and talk about it, I have soared in comparison from 1999 until 2019. But isn't that like with the word, the word does direct to our cognitive and to our mind and where the battle is sure. truly won. So it is tools that should so, be. Yeah, but what I, what I just say, okay, so nobody knows about what happens when you when you go through the process of TDC, you are stripped of your humanity. You're stripped of your pride. You are given a toothbrush and some powder. They tell you to put it on your armpits when you start stinking and brush your teeth with it. They give you a pair of underwear that somebody else has already worn for the last 20 years and you get clothes that could have bed bugs in them. You don't know. Mm -hmm. So you're stripped of everything and anything. And then when you're stripped of everything and you take all that and you fill it with a cognitive God, you know what that means? God in your brain, your thinking has to be connected with God. The only way to do that is to spend a whole lot of time in this. Mm -hmm. The last two years of my incarceration, I read this Bible front to back, all translations I could get my hands on. And, and the entire time my brain's going, <laughs> that's a funny story. That's good. That's mm -hmm. no, no way that ever happened. You know what I mean? That's what my brain was doing. And, and I haven't been steady on reading the word since I got out of prison that time, I still read my Bible. I still read the app sometimes, but I don't read it a lot, but it was the time that I spent then. Okay. It was the time that I spent then is why I can sit here and even connect with you in this word. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying earlier in the video, mm -hmm. that if you haven't spent time in the word, you really, really need to, even if it don't make sense and all the stuff that's talking to you, come on, that'll help you figure it out. So that's the process. You got to let your mind, go a million miles an hour sometimes and, and let it do its process and yeah. relax and this and word breathe. is our weapon. When I say it's our weapon, it's what the spirit uses, like when the devil does come attack and he does come attack. And so um, I hope this encourages you today that you know that we do, because someone, we do, we go through seasons and I get that. But understand, he's still there. Cause he's still there. What I just purpose yeah, in it. What I just say with my big long story, like when I let everything go, he was right there and he filled me up with everything I needed to succeed with. Mm -hmm. And all it is, my duty is to maintain it. Yes. Let's not get comfortable on the top of the mountain. We can walk down the mountain. We can walk ourselves into humility. Yes. And we can walk ourselves into His presence. And when, let his do his work there. Yeah, you just got to let him do it, though. Don't interfere like, like we try to fix everything. Yes. Just let it happen and let your emotions run their course and yes. be angry and sad. Don't sin. Yes. Talk to somebody. Right. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> you can <Bye>. edit that. <laughs>